Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Drupal Alexa and Big Mouth Billy Bass Walk Into a Bar. My name is Amber Matz, and I'm a production manager and trainer at Drupalize Me. Good morning. Uh, my name is Blake Hall. I'm a senior developer and trainer also at Drupalize Me. So here's what we're going to cover in this session. We'll look at Alexa custom skills, specifically concepts you'll want to understand as well as the process of creating an Alexa skill. And then we'll walk through three different example approaches of Alexa skills. Um, two of those will include integrating data from a Drupal site uh, into the response that Alexa reads back. And finally, we'll wrap up with a demo of two of our Alexa skills with a bit of a fun hardware twist featuring a big mouth Billy Bass, animatronic fish, an Arduino, and an Echo Dot. There are three types of Alexa skills, custom skills, smart home skills, and flash briefings. We'll be covering custom skills, but we'll also demo our Drupalize Me flash briefing at the end of the session. By the end of this presentation, you should feel empowered and ready to create your own custom Alexa skill with or without Drupal. To get the most out of this presentation, you should be an intermediate coder and comfortable tinkering with code. But you don't have to be a node expert or a web services expert to create an Alexa skill. It's a pretty accessible development experience. If you've already created a custom Alexa skill, stick around as we'll go beyond the basics in the session and maybe you'll pick up a new trick or two. The first thing to consider when building a skill is how users will interact with the skill and the types of phrases your code will support. Alexa's style of, of interaction is very direct and full of commands like ask, tell, open, launch. For example, in our fish jokes skill, to get Alexa to say a joke from fish jokes, you would say, Alexa, ask fish jokes for a silly joke. We can simplify this into a very basic workflow diagram where you ask Alexa to get a silly joke from fish jokes and that's exactly what you get. In this particular case, we're hearing Alexa say a joke tagged with the term silly from our Drupal site, Fish Jokes for Life. There are four terms we're going to be throwing around a lot in this session that are key to designing an Alexa skill. They are activation, invocation, utterance, and intent. Let's look at our example command. Alexa, ask fish jokes for a silly joke in more detail. Alexa is the activation or wake word. This is how you start a conversation with your device. Activation words can be Alexa, Echo, Amazon, or computer. They are fixed by Amazon and can't be customized at this time. But they are configurable by device. So if you have two Echo Dots in your house, you could configure one to use Alexa as an activation word and the other one to use Echo. Ask fish jokes is the invocation. This tells Alexa where to send your request. You can, you can use the words open, launch, or ask, plus the name of your skill to enable the user to access your skill. For a silly joke is the utterance and intent. This is passed along to your skill and determines the response. Utterances are the phrases your skill will recognize. This is your opportunity to think about the variety of phrases users might say to interact with your skill. Utterances can use placeholder words or slots to make requests more dynamic. 
Intents are a behind-the-scenes way for your skill to support multiple kinds of requests. Some Amazon intents are built in, such as help, stop, and cancel. And we'll see how this works later on. Put together, these three concepts are the tools you will use to design the interaction users will have with your skill. So with that in mind and some of the kind of basic vocabulary out of the way, let's take a look at how you go about designing the uh, interaction model that goes into creating a skill in more detail. So um, this departs a little bit from the docs uh, that Amazon has on their site, but we've sort of found through doing this that it makes the most sense to start with utterances. Um, those are the things the users will actually be saying to your skill, so figuring out what the utterance model looks like and, and the different types of things people will say to your skill to trigger different behavior seems like the, the best place to start to sort of help figure out what your app will actually be doing. Um, so today we're mostly going to look at custom skills. Out of those three types that Amber mentioned before, they're sort of the, the most useful and the most typical unless you're dealing with like a internet appliance or smart appliance or um, the flash briefing which We'll demo again at the end. So from a kind of a high level, what's going on here, um, once you figure out the interaction model, you need to figure out where the data is going to come from that Alexa responds back with. Uh, Amazon has a service called Lambda that sort of makes this process uh, pretty easy and, and pretty simple to get started with. Lambda is basically a way that you can execute code when a request comes in on demand. So you don't have to have a server sitting around idle most of the time you just pay per interaction. Um, there's a really good free kind of developer tier, so you won't have to pay while you're working on the skill or have a server sitting around kind of listening, waiting for requests to come in. So you can actually get started. Um, Amazon has a, a GitHub repository that has a whole bunch of example code called Blueprints. Um, we shamelessly copied and pasted some of these, which we'll see in, in the examples in a little bit. Uh, blueprints are available, any, any of the code that runs on Lambda is available in three different languages. You can use Java, Python, or Node.js. Um, I'm most familiar with Node out of those three, so we'll be looking at JavaScript examples in more detail. So uh, since Lambda is executing uh, Node.js code in our case, you can sort of make that as complex as you want or as simple. So the sample blueprint we started with is just a list of hard-coded values in an array that we pull a random one out of and then respond back with that. But then the second example, we'll look at replacing that hard-coded array with the results of a web service call that could pull data from anywhere, including a Drupal site. So uh, like I said, starting with, we shamelessly copied um, one of the blueprints called Space Facts. So it's a hard-coded list of of facts about space. We swapped those out with uh, fish facts and fish jokes and then respond back with one of those. Uh, the actual JavaScript that makes up that blueprint, it's not necessarily incredibly straightforward, but at this point we're basically just talking about finding and replacing some text without necessarily having to understand all of the functionality that's involved. The, the second example, as I mentioned, we'll use the same exact blueprint as a starting point but replace that hard-coded array with a call to our Drupal site, and then we'll take a look at how um, easy it was in Drupal to expose the JSON that then comes back in that Alexa response. And then the last example we'll walk through, we completely get rid of uh, AWS Lambda as a tool at all, and we have Alexa talking directly to our Drupal site and Drupal responding back. So it simplifies the stack a little bit, but it's some extra code that needs to be written. There are a few things you need to do before you can get started creating a custom Alexa skill. First, you need to create an Amazon developer account. You'll also use this account to access AWS if you want to use Lambda. Next, you'll need to sign in to developer.amazon.com and navigate to the Alexa tab. Click on Get Started under the Alexa Skills Kit and locate the docs. There's a link to getting started with the Alexa Skills Kit in the paragraph above the little dashboard there, and you can click on that link to get started. 
to find the uh, documentation specifically for the custom skills, find that in the sidebar and expand the custom skills menu item to find the specific documentation for custom skills. Then go ahead and add a new skill, click that button. And there's a lot of inline documentation in the configuration form. So you can dive right into configuration and access the docs as you need. You don't need to necessarily memorize the manual before you even get started with configuration. Alexa skill development consists of both configuration and code. So we'll start the process with configuration that our code needs to run. We'll do some coding, not in this session, but in general in the development process, you'll then go and do your code, and then you'll, we'll come back to the configuration, finalize that after our endpoint is ready to go. In this first phase of configuration, we'll define our invocation name, intents, and utterances. The invocation name is the unique identifier for your skill and is part of what users will say to access and interact with your skill. So there are two names on this form for the, the skill information tab. The name, just plain name, is what will be displayed in the Alexa app where people find and enable new skills for their device. And the invocation name is what users will say to interact with your skill. And there's some specific guidelines that you can take a look at for how that can be formatted. The next configuration se section is where you define your interaction model, which consists of intents, slots, and utterances. So this form, which may be changing, we notice that there's a beta um, available to some users. But this is where you're, you'll define your intent schema, your custom slot types, and your sample utterances. Sample utterances are where we're going to start, regardless of the order of the form, which, you know, it might change, and it, it changed in the beta. We think it's helpful to start with sample utterances. And with sample utterances, you will specify words or phrases that users say to invoke intents. And this can be a variety of phrases. You should think about all the different kinds of ways that a user would ask for this information. And so it can include quite an extensive list of different phrasing so that your user isn't going to get frustrated because they're not saying like the one exact phrase that you programmed in. So you want to really have a variety. There's some good ideas for different types of phrasing in the documentation but and that I found really helpful. So it's important to include a variety. You map utterances to intents, and this map forms the interaction model for your skill. Here's a basic example of sample utterances. The first word, get new fact intent, represents a specific intent. This is what creates the map between the user's request and the functionality of our skill. We'll see this again when we fill in our intent schema. Notice there's no extra, there's no activation word, the name of our skill isn't in there. It's the intent name, which will be in our schema, followed by some phrasing. Here's an example that uses slots. Slots, you can think of, of like tokens that represent dynamic values that will be passed along to our skill. This is useful for asking for things like weather in a particular city or a category of joke, as we have in this example. And you can see the slot in the curly bracket there for category. Utterances, your list of utterances, can include more than one intent. And you'll include, you'll need to include a set of utterances for each intent in your schema. Your code can then use these different intents to return different responses based on the intent type. Utterances allow users to say a variety of phrases as they interact with your skill. Don't include activation words or the name of your skill in sample utterances. I found that to be a little bit confusing at first as I was trying to just breeze through a tutorial. And no, you just include the intent name plus the phrasing. 
without any extra information. Do include a variety of phrases as it will make it easier for your users to interact with your skill. And if you're using slots, then make sure to include the slot in your utterances and in the phrasing, and you'll put it in different places in the phrase, and you use the curly bracket uh, syntax for that. Next, in this configuration, we need to define our intents. Intents are the map between utterances we created and the code that we'll execute. You define intents with an intent schema, which is a JSON structure that declares the set of intents that your skill can accept and process. It's best practice to include Amazon's built-in intents for common actions like stop, help, and cancel. And you'll see these included in the example blueprints available on GitHub. And it's a matter of copying and pasting that in. So here's a look at an intent schema for our basic example. Get new fact intent at the top there is our custom intent. And it's the placeholder word that we use in our sample utterances in the different part of the form. And then this is followed by Amazon's built-in intents. So it's pretty straightforward to get a custom intent mapped plus help stop and cancel with just this simple JSON array. Slots are the variable words in our utterances, and they're optional. You can think of them as optional arguments, like in views, for example. You need to configure slots so that Alexa knows how to pass them along to your, to your code. You will include slots in your intent schema if you're using them. So here's an example of our fish joke skill that uses a slot that allows us to respond with categorized jokes. So we can see there's an intent for get categorized jokes and then the slot, name, and type. And then after that is our other intent, get fish jokes, which returns a fish joke without any category. You want to consider that if you're using slots, you also want to include an intent that doesn't use slots so that you, know, you don't want to assume that your users know what terms or categories you might have for your skill. And so that completes like the basic interaction model configuration. You'll get to this point in the form where you have to configure an endpoint and you'll realize you can't go any further until you do some coding and complete your endpoint. Your end so it's time to write some code. We need an endpoint to actually provide the functionality to our skill. So like I said before, we're gonna take a look at three different examples that sort of grow in complexity um, as we go. So the first one we'll look at, um, once you've sort of figured out your, the sample utterances and the things that users are gonna say to interact with your app, the, the next step if you're going through this process without copying from the blueprint is to figure out where the actual data that Alexa will respond back to, uh, come, where it's coming from. So our, our tips are, at least when you're getting started, use Lambda. Um, the free tier is really great. Uh, I discovered uh, yesterday, I think it was, or a couple days ago, they sent me an email that since I have a published skill now, they gave me a free $100 credit for uh, Lambda usage. And every month that I have an active skill, I get another $100 credit. So for as popular as I think the fish joke skill will be, it will probably always be free, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, also, sort of the op in open source tradition, I would recommend shamelessly copying and pasting from whatever code examples you can find, at least to get started. Uh, there are blueprints available for all different types of skills, uh, light switches and garage door openers and um, all kinds of stuff beyond just sort of the basic examples we'll dig into here. Uh, there's an Alexa organization you can find on GitHub that has all of those, those sample uh, code snippets you can use. Uh, that stuff is also available right in the Lambda dashboard itself when you're getting started with it. So um, I said before, but just to sort of reiterate, Lambda supports three different languages. So if you're familiar with either Node or Python or Java, there are examples in each skill type for each language. So you can sort of dig in where you're the most comfortable. Um, I would imagine as Drupal developers, Node is probably something you're either already familiar with or at least have been exposed to uh, maybe more recently than like a Java class in college or something. 
Um, so we're going to look at node examples. So again, the simplest example, um, it uses the space facts node blueprint, which you'll find if you dig into Lambda or look on GitHub. The response values come from a, an array that's just hard coded in the Lambda function itself. And you can sort of go in and replace the space facts with whatever information it is you actually want to return to users instead of information about space. So just sort of for completeness, um, here's the intent schema that we set up with this skill that uses the, the fish facts. Um, it has one single custom intent, which is that get new fact intent. Even though we're talking about fish jokes, uh, I was really lazy doing the copying and pasting, so I left it as get new fact intent rather than get new joke or get something else. Um, another important note, like Amber mentioned, it's good practice to sort of include these Amazon uh, built-in help stop and cancel intents. The first time I tried this, I didn't do that. And um, I also goofed up the JavaScript a little bit. So my uh, Alexa responded with a fish joke and kept repeating the fish joke over <laughs> and over and over and over and over and over and over again until I unplugged it. Um, which uh, was definitely not a feature. So, um, so we, we, we sort of talked about why it's important to start with utterances and kind of figure out the whole interaction model your user will have with a skill. Generally speaking, you'll want something that's more complete and complex with this. Uh, I think it's important to consider all of the different types of things a user might say to try to accomplish their goals with your skill so they don't have to try to remember the exact phrasing that you have. In this example, we only have these three. Um, tell me a joke, give me a joke, make me laugh. But I think if you're building something more robust, you probably want to consider you know, ways to not leave someone frustrated, remember it, trying to remember the exact sentence they should use when they're interacting with your skill. So I'm sure this is really hard to read uh, in the back. We've, I've committed all of these code samples. Uh, they're available in a fish jokes repository on my GitHub page, at Blake Hall, if you want to check them out in more detail. This one in particular is not super important to look at because it's just a find and replace from the blueprint. But you can see there's sort of a little data structure that's being built up with language strings. Uh, the blueprint that comes with space facts actually supports translation across languages. So if your Alexa user is in Germany, it'll pull from uh, an array of uh, German facts and phrases instead of uh, English US in this case. Um, but basically, all, all we did here is to rip out the space information and replace it with some fish information, I think was pulled from uh, Wikipedia. So we've got this jokes array with just a list of, of values, and this is the data source that we're using in the first example. So these are the only things that Alexa would be able to respond back with. At this point, like, I had used the space facts blueprint and then I ripped that out and replaced it with fish facts from Wikipedia and then we just use that to refactor it for fish jokes so that's probably like an in-between stage of copying and pasting but that's basically we're copying and pasting blueprints at this point. And these aren't actually jokes they're still facts but we're calling them jokes. <laughs> um, so here's the actual JavaScript that's below that hard-coded array. Um, it's a handler object that receives the intent coming in from your Alexa skill and then matches that to uh, a, fe a function or method. So in this case, when that get new fact intent comes in, um, we're emitting a, a get joke event that will then trigger our get joke function. That's grabbing that jokes array. Uh, it's pulling out a random value. And it's emitting a tell card event uh, with the value of the joke that it pulled out from the array. So actually understanding what's going on here is sort of dependent on digging into the Amazon Node SDK library a little bit. But since this blueprint's available, you don't necessarily have to invest the time in doing that to get started. You can just sort of take the example and, and try it out and tweak it. Um, to be honest, I haven't actually dug into that library much at all. I know that if I, if I can emit event uh, tell with card and I pass it a string, my Alexa reads back what I want it to, and that's sort of the extent of how much I poked around with it. Um, I did dig into it a little bit more to, to do some fancier metadata stuff that we'll look at later on, but um, you really don't need 
uh, sophisticated knowledge of, of what's going on with the code to sort of get this started, which I think is, is pretty cool. So with that one out of the way, let's sort of take a look at how we could actually get our Drupal site involved. Uh, if we just published a skill that had a list of hard-coded 20 fish jokes, I'm sure uh, people would get sick of that pretty quickly. So in the, in the web service example, like I said, we're gonna use the same Lambda function, the same code that we looked at before, but we'll basically swap out that hard-coded jokes array with a web service call to get data. This lets us use a Drupal site or really any other public API as our data source so we can pull from a larger library of material. So again, kind of for completeness, um, the intent schema is the exact same that we saw before. There's the one simple intent, which is get new fact intent. Again, we're getting a joke, but I didn't want to copy and paste everything and goof something up. Again, we have the same really simple sample three utterances. Um, you'd probably want this to be more rich in a real example, but for the, these purposes, this works just fine. And then in the, the code example, um, this is the get joke function that we saw before. So instead of pulling from a, a jokes array, we're setting up a, a URL with our API endpoint and this is live, so you can go and, and poke at it and see the JSON in your browser if you want. Uh, fishjokes4.life is the name of the site. And if you go to slash joke dash me dash please, it will return uh, one particular joke node at random. Um, so we grab that URL. We use node's HTTPS library to make a get request. Um, after the data from that request has come back and we've received all of the JSON, we parse the response out, we pull out the title, and we pull out the punchline. We concatenate those two things, and then we uh, run that Alexa emit event with the speech output of the joke contents. Does that make sense? It's, it's relatively straightforward. It's just an API get call, we get some data, we send the same type of event back. So on the Drupal side of things, the only thing I had to do to make this available was to create a really simple view uh, in this case, it's, uh, there are two different displays. I just created a new view, a content type view, restricted to the joke content type, jokes that had been published. I added a new display type uh, called rest export, and then I put a sort criteria on it to just grab one at random. Um, so Drupal 8 really makes it dead simple to export JSON, especially if what you're looking for is a random node and not something more complicated but there's nothing that would stop me from adding contextual filters to allow passing in a category here or swapping out this views example with something like the REST server that's built into core or JSON API. You can sort of make this as, as simple or complicated as you want, but one of the things, especially with Drupal 8, is it's really made web services and exposing the data in your Drupal database easy and straightforward. And if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you can come up and we can talk about that for uh, the rest of the conference because it's something I'm pretty passionate about. So since it's DrupalCon, we figured we should have an example that just completely gets rid of Lambda and Node and doesn't require anything other than Drupal and Alexa. Um, so we've got an example here that completely gets rid of the Lambda dependency and the, you know, the requirement to know Node.js or Python or Java. So from a high level, what's going on is the user interacts with their device, they ask Alexa something. Alexa um, will be invoked by the invocation name, so your app gets triggered. The data from that gets sent to your Drupal website. Drupal does some magic, responds back with a response, and that gets sent back to Alexa. So we're completely removing the, the Lambda piece, uh, like I mentioned. Um, when, I, when Amber and I first talked about this session and I was thinking about having to do this, I went and looked at the spec and saw the, the actual JSON that Alexa sends and um, was not exactly looking forward to figuring out how to parse that, mostly because there's some HTTPS handshake stuff that has to go on. There's a Amazon Alexa skill ID that you have to verify to make sure that people aren't just randomly hitting your, um, your callback endpoint. But, you know, thankfully, this is Drupal, so there's already a module for all of this, um, which, it was, is a huge help. So the Alexa module actually makes use of another PHP library. I actually learned uh, when I registered on Monday that this was put together for Dries's keynote demo last year. 
uh, which is probably why it's not covered under the security policy. I don't know necessarily that it's up to date, and I haven't really dug into the security holes uh, of what's going on, but um, it's really easy to use, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. If anybody wants to hack the fish jokes for .life site, go right ahead. It's not super sensitive. So you download the module, you turn it on, uh, and then you sort of wonder what next. There are basically only a couple of different things that Alexa module does. Uh, one, it provides a configuration form where you give Drupal the application ID for your Alexa skill. This is used in that sort of handshake thing I talked about before. So when a response comes in, the first thing it does is say, is this actually coming from a skill I should be responding to or not? Um, the second thing you do is you give Alexa on the configuration form that Amber showed before the uh, URL for the callback of your endpoint. Uh, and I think we have another slide of the actual endpoint later on. And then the third step is you write a little bit of code. Um, and when I say a little bit of code, I think the final example for this is like 80 lines and most of it's kind of boilerplate uh, object oriented stuff. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So the, the module uses uh, events. If you've played around with Drupal 8 development at all, you've probably seen the event pattern already. So in order to actually respond to one of these Alexa requests, we create a request subscriber class and we basically register an event subscriber for the Alexa event dot request event type and then we tell it what method we're going to call when that event is triggered. After that, our on request method is triggered. It's passed uh, both the, the request and the response JSON structure that we'll need coming from Alexa and then sending back out to Alexa. Uh, here there's a switch statement so you can check for that intent name that we saw in the intent schema. So if I actually cared about people that were using fish jokes, the help intent should probably respond with like a list of categories that people could use to get categorized jokes. I didn't bother implementing that in the example, but um, you could certainly do something a little more helpful there if you wanted to. In our case, we do have two intents, one with uh, categorized jokes and one without categorizing jokes. But instead of switching that on intent, I just decided to handle that in code for the default case. So I could sort of ignore what was going on there. Um, with the, the slot here, you can see that that's being passed in um, kind of in the middle. It's part of that request that we're getting from Amazon. So I'm pulling that out and setting that to a variable called term name since we're using kind of the Drupal built-in Drupal field tags taxonomy. Uh, I'm starting an entity query for nodes that are published and of the joke type. And then if we have a value for that term name field that came in a slot with the Amazon request, we're adding a query condition that will look for just jokes that have been tagged with that term name. Uh, we execute the query. If it comes back empty, um, this actually broke the skill the first time I tried publishing it because I didn't have jokes in every category. So I decided that uh, if it's empty, I'm just going to hard code my favorite one that we, that we put on the site. Uh, most of the jokes that make up the site now actually come from Amber's niece. Uh, I solicited a few more on Twitter. So uh, Mark Drummond and Steve Persh, thanks for having a lame sense of humor and humoring me. Um, so. We execute the query. If we can't find something, we use node ID 7. Otherwise, we just pull a random node from what came back in our query. We load that node. And then uh, we build up this card data structure. So this card thing is a little bit new, and we haven't really seen this before. But if you have a, an Echo Dot or an Alexa in the app itself, every time you interact with the Alexa device, it will have a card in, uh, in the app on your phone that sort of says, is this what you actually meant when you were talking to Alexa? Or if you're developing a skill, you can respond with more rich metadata that has information about what was going on. Like if, it's a, if you're playing a, a song, for example, you could send back album art. Or uh, if it's a news briefing, you could send back some photos from the news story. So this actually isn't supported by the Alexa module that's on Drupal.org, so I had to sort of hack around it in a probably not correct way, uh, so that I could send back the image URLs. But like I said, that code's on GitHub and you know, pull requests welcome. So now we're sort of back to where we started with the whole Alexa ask fish jokes for a silly joke. Uh, 
And when we do that, the app on our phone will send back the actual joke and an image that's been uploaded with the joke itself. I'm sort of contemplating opening up the fish joke site for uh, user submitted jokes with images, but I decided not to do that before DrupalCon, just for the um, interest, of, interest of safety. Um, that said, the skill went live kind of late last week, and there are already 67 people that have enabled it. I don't understand why. I think I've... <laughs> but, um, you know, it is, it is what it is. So now that we've got the, the code kind of working and Alexa actually responding back to, uh, or Drupal responding back to Alexa, we can actually go back to the configuration and finish up getting things set up. So when you go back to that configuration form on the developer dashboard, uh, you'll want to test that things are actually working. Again, I broke this while uh, working on it. After I decided to add the image stuff, um, I added all of those jokes from Twitter uh, when I got here this week on Monday. And my code didn't handle originally the case where there was no image file attached to the node. So it just horribly broke. And for about a day, all of the Alexa responses that were coming back just didn't do anything. Um, if I would have used the, the tester, I would have noticed that a, a lot sooner on. Uh, it's basically a form where you type in the sample utterance that you'll actually want to say to the app you hit a little button, the JSON stuff happens. You can look at the JSON for both the request and the response, and then there's a button where you can play it to actually hear what it says. One of the things we didn't include in the demo and um, was sort of a, a last minute discovery we didn't have time for is there's a special markup syntax you can use in your response that will tell Alexa how to sort of emphasize or pronounce different words so it doesn't do the weird spacing kind of robot thing to make things a little more natural. We haven't, I don't think either one of us has dug into that in great detail yet, but it's something I'm going to look at when I go back and kind of keep working on this. So once you've sort of, once you have things tested and configured properly and you're sort of comfortable that you're ready to go, there's a certification process, much like with an iPhone app or an Android app. Um, Amazon will want to test things and sort of make sure that it's good to go. It seems to be a fairly automated standard process that happens on non-US hours. It's the kind of thing where regardless of when you hit the certification button, you'll wake up to an email the next morning saying it either passed or failed or not. Um, the finishing the app configuration for the certification process requires things like uploading an image that will be used as the logo for your skill in the skill store, um, giving users some sample phrases that they can use when they're browsing the app listing uh, and that sort of thing. And then after the skill is actually live, there's a really handy sort of dev test environment thing that goes on. So they automatically create a dev version for you that you can keep working on and keep refining. And then when you're ready, uh, you can resubmit that. It goes through the certification process again and then replaces the live skill you've got. So we've got a screenshot here of uh, oh. both the, the live and development versions as well as the metrics dashboard. Um, the metrics are actually really neat. You can look at, on an hourly basis, how many people are hitting your skill, what intents they're executing. You can't see the actual phrases they're using, but you could measure sort of which method is being invoked and how often and, and that sort of thing. And like I said, I I'm shocked that there are 67 people that decided they wanted to ask uh, their home device fish jokes, especially given the quality of the jokes we have. <laughs> okay. Okay. We had a bit of an overheating problem exactly five minutes before this presentation, so we'll see how this goes. Let's get to the fish. That's why you're all here, right? So here's this, uh, a bit of a schematic-ish sort of a thing. So what I have going here, well, I'll show you, I'll show the overhead cam, but looking at this, you can see what is going on. So the fish has two motors inside. So there's a motor for the mouth, and then there's a motor for the head and the tail. It's spring-loaded, so it, it can work like that. Um, I'm only using one for the mouth. Um, the motor shield, the, fish, the fish's motors, I basically stripped everything out of the fish, so except for the motors. So I took everything out, and I've got the wires for the motors, and I've got them connected to this motor shield, the terminal blocks. 
um, on the motor shield. The motor shield is stack, a shield in Arduino is, is, is like a stackable unit so that you can expand the functionality of your board. So the motor shield is stacked on the Arduino Uno. That circle, the VIN jumper sleeve is on, which enables me to use 12 volt power through a barrel jack. And so the power of 12 volts runs through the barrel jack and the, the VIN jumper, and it actually powers the motors. There is a headphone out from the Echo Dot. And my husband helped make me a, a cable that splits out into two places. So I've got a headphone out from the Echo Dot, and then it goes to a, an external speaker so we can actually hear the Echo. And then the other end is soldered to the analog zero and the ground inputs on the motor shield. The way this works, it's, this is actually the, the fish will move its mouth to any audio input above a certain threshold. So if you wanted, you could use any audio source, not just an Alexa. This is if the live demo doesn't work. <laughs> Okay, one moment. I, I unplugged things because there was overheating. I know enough electronics to like recognize when something is smoking or about to set on fire in my lab. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> That's all you really need, right? I had a nice chat with the fire department when I melted a pack of eight batteries a few weeks ago. They're really nice. <laughs> All right. If you pray, you can pray. Oh. Oh, thanks. Is it mirrored or? Oh, here we go. Yeah? All right. Alexa, ask fish jokes for a silly joke. Also, internet. It's thinking. Oh. Might help if I turn the volume on. Bear with. Sorry, your Echo Dot lost its connection. All right, who's on the internet? We've got a, we got a couple of minutes here. Let's do this. So, Blake, do you know any fish jokes? <laughs> Not good ones. This is what I get for taunting the, uh, the fact that the Alexa module has a security vulnerability. <laughs> it's glowing this like interesting teal color. Alexa, ask fish jokes for a silly joke. I just want you to know, I'm, I'm feeling the pain for all of you who know that you're not supposed to do live demos. And then this is, let this be a lesson to you. <clears throat> the Alexa app also tends to um, get a little crashy sometimes. It's like flashing Sorry. red now. Your Echo Dot lost its connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fish should be moving its mouth for that. Let me show you the video while I'm trying to get this figured out. 
lost my, um, I can't, yeah, I know I didn't have my cursor. Oh, sorry, I thought this was the video. Oh, oh shoot. Fail. I, I think I, um, I thought I uploaded a video, but, oh, it's moving. Here we go. Oh, sound. So much fail. Um, sorry. Alexa, tell me a joke. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding right now. Please try it. I know you are. So that's what it's supposed to do. So yeah, that was working up until literally 10 minutes before, so. And it's pretty much guaranteed to start again about five minutes after q and is done? Yeah, that's basically it. I'll try and um, find a table somewhere and get it plugged in and working again and you can come and find me, but. Sorry. Um, all of this was, I used this tutorial from instructables.com and to, uh, it's called Animate a Billy Bass Mouth with Any Audio Source by Donald Bell. So go check that out. There's code and uh, instructions for the hardware. And we also have a Drupalize Me flash briefing that since we have internet problems, um, we we also cannot demo, but you can <laughs> um, add the Drupal A's Me flash briefing skill to um, your own device. If you go into settings and flash briefings, you can search for Drupal A's Me. And basically, it's an RSS reader that literally reads the RSS feed. So you can add NPR and other news sources. And so we decided for fun to add the Drupal A's Me one. You can win an Echo Dot. We're giving one away. Um, go to our twitter.com slash uh, page and um, retweet our tweet about the Drupalize Me flash briefing skill that was just published this morning. We'll pick in a random winner. Um, the contest will close at 1 p.m. and you must be present here at DrupalCon to win. Um, there are sprints happening tomorrow. This is for everyone. You don't have to be just a core contributor. Developers, doc writers, project managers, bug reporters, QA testers, and you. And there's there will be mentors available. So you can find out more um, are on the signs around here and on the website. Um, so to quickly recap, in this session, we went through the Alexa skill creation process and how you can integrate that with your Drupal site. We hope you're feeling inspired and energized to go and create your own custom Alexa skills and not do uh, live demos with animatronic fish and integrate them with Drupal. Um, please let us know how we did so that we can tell more bad jokes and do uh, more hardware demos in the future at DrupalCon. Um, I think we're about, are we out of time? Do we have time for questions? We have time for questions or if you want to demo the, the electronics. Oh yeah, let me demo the electronics here. Um, okay. Move this camera back over. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, here we go. So um, we've got, there's the motor shield, sorry. There's the motor shield and uh, you can see that the wires, where, there we go. The wires from the fish are coming out from here into the terminal block. And then here's the, uh, up top here is the analog zero and ground. And so that's the headphone jack. And that goes around to the echo dot and the speaker. So it, and then here's the barrel jack for the power, um, the 12 volt power. So it's, it's not too bad. There was just a little bit of soldering involved for the, um, the headphone. And the main gotcha was the VIN jumper. So you have to put, you have to uh, put on this VIN jumper sleeve in order to be able to pass through 12 volts of power and use uh, the, the VIN power for that. So it's a pretty basic thing. And um, relatively speaking, if you have some, some soldering skills, and uh, you can always go to your local maker space and they can help you with that if you want to learn how to uh, use a soldering iron. And, um, and like I said, there's instructions for putting together this uh, with this exact board, the, the tutorials, so that it's the Adafruit Motor Shield, the version two. But you can use any motor shield. You could, I've used the version one, you just have to use a different library and kind of refactor the, the code a little bit. Um, and the, the code is, is fairly straightforward. We're just, um, we create a, a motor, a motor object, and then oh, if the sensor value is above a certain threshold, uh, move the motor. So as long as there's not like some kind of problem with your motor because you've been trying it out too many times. So yeah, that's basically the, the hardware of it. Um, so yeah, if there's any questions, you can come and find us after or you can use the mic and we'll be happy to try and answer them. I'm not sure if it's working. It's working, uh, yeah. Question. If you get, speak into the mic, yeah. Yeah, uh, question. Uh, how could we personalize Alexa responses? So for example, uh, if I want to get my score, do I need to register Alexa with a website or something for there different are, users? So there are different types of slots you can use. But when we looked at the, when you're defining your sample utterances, you can put in a slot, which is essentially a variable. So um, one of the slot types you can use is something that will just be completely custom when it comes back. So you can take a look at the documentation for slot types and that'll kind of walk you through how you might set that up. Okay. Does that but make sense? Yeah, but does the, uh, does the user need to enter their Alexa ID on a website if they want to get the responses? They, yeah, so your Alexa app will have a unique identifier that you can actually also make use of in the, the skill interaction process. Okay. There are a couple extra flags in code you need to set if you're doing something like that. Um, it's, it's in the docs, I haven't worked with it yet, but I've seen it, it's available and it's there and there's a unique identifier that'll come back and forth that'll allow you to map the Alexa ID of a person to something on your site. Yep. Um, but you'll need some way to know what their like Alexa user ID is. So I haven't, I know it's possible, but I haven't dug, it, dug into it yet. Okay, thank you. Um, hey, I've got two questions. Um, first of all, I've written a couple of Alexa skills to this point using Drupal 7 APIs. Nothing released to the wild yet. Um, but I have, part of the reason I've been like hesitant to release them is because I didn't know about the whole live and then you get a dev version. Um, once you have the live skill and the dev skill, how do you invoke the dev skill on the hardware? Um, you'll have to use either the, t the test simulator that's on just the web yeah. interface yeah. or um, y on your own device, you yeah. can enable the dev skill alongside the live skill. Okay. So I can have two different versions. Um, the, I assume the invocation name changes. If you well, that, that's that. what I was wondering. It's um, fine. If I had to call it something different. Um, I published this last week and I haven't needed to change it yet, so I don't Fair know enough. the details. Um, the other question was the, the module. Um, does it support persistent sessions? 
I would guess not. Okay. Um, I had to add support just to add the multimedia card response. So okay. it's it's pretty bare bones for now, but. Okay. Well, maybe I just found a module to contribute to. Cool. <laughs> Hi, I, I just love the presentation. And uh, the question I have is authentication. So I think the, the guy before asked about different users accessing the site, but would they be, you know, is there a way to authenticate and then? Yeah, it's, it's the same answer. There definitely okay. is. I haven't dug into the docs for it, so I don't oh. know the details, but um, the. There is like an option in the configuration that asks if there's user authentication. So okay. I know it's like also a configuration option and there's documentation for it. So okay. it's Thanks. supported, I think. Okay. Thank you. I was going to have the same question. It was really in terms of OAuth and like other uh, like Facebook uh, kind of auth and stuff like that. But if that's sure. the case, then. Yeah, <laughs> one, of the, one of the things we noticed putting this together is that um, there's sort of an overwhelming amount of documentation on the Amazon developer site for how to go about building all of this stuff. So rather than dig into nitty gritty details, we wanted to try to be inspiring about how easy it is to get, get started. Um, but once you understand kind of the basic vocabulary and the basic pieces that go into doing this, uh, it's a lot easier to Google for the right type of thing in the developer docs, too. If, if I understood the question correctly, the Amazon term for that is account maintenance. Sure, right. Yeah, so to repeat just for the recording, the Amazon term for this whole user authentication thing is account linking. Um, uh, I've been to a bunch of sessions, and I just had to say this is truly inspirational. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. How, how I personally got started was I found a tutorial, but the README on the, the Alex, on Alexa GitHub for the space facts is basically a tutorial in and of itself. I just dove in and like copied and pasted the hell out of it. And um, just to get started, like, and I got that thing pub like developed and published in uh, two days. And it was just like, there were a lot of things that I missed and I didn't understand and that I could have done better, but just get it. Just do it and like get it done, and then you once you understand like the basics, you can the documentation starts to make more sense because there's a lot of particular terminology and concepts that we tried to clarify today. But it makes it easier once you've done it, and then once you're testing it out and you're playing with it, and you realize like how limited <laughs> you know the basic example is basic and. But you can uh, learn from there and just keep going. And I found the certification process to be really quick and, and friendly. So they do also, it. They're also <laughs> really promoting or skill development right now. So if you release one in the next, I think, three days, you can get a free t-shirt. Although I have not received my hoodie, and I'm a little disappointed about that. But yeah, they're like giving away t-shirts and hoodies and all sorts of stuff. So anyway, any other questions? Thank you very much.